this one. Like a similar author gets upset. Hey, wish you luck. Oh, thanks. Oh, pfft. hi, Mikey. Did you? Uh... Hi, this is uh, Annie and Mike Nelson uh, in New Jersey. This is our Vandy Graph machine that we've just finished. It's the 31st of May. It's 11:30 in the morning, and we just finished uh, designing this. Uh, the height of it is just about 52 inches overall, so just under 5 feet, and uh, the tops are salad bowls, um, and the whole construction took us about $25. Most of the parts were parts we had. Um, it works fantastic, and as you will see, we get incredible spark discharges off of it. They really hurt, too. Here's a close-up, or pickup. Let's construct. We had quarter inch rods and we used our brass bearing material. Pick up which is standard aluminum screen. Uh, constructed the copper tubing. I believe it was quarter inch OD. And the top terminal where it connects with the terminal, it basically just fits into a large dimple and we get the light in. You can see there's like a film canister inside it actually a large dimple for it to set in to keep it centered. The terminal, top terminal was constructed of two large bowls that we picked up at Kmart. Actually we picked up three one is for the bottom, two for the top half. I sawed the rims off on the top, epoxied them together inside. Also used uh, aluminum tape along with the, uh, to make sure there was the two halves were uh, electrically connected. The uh, rim is actually only glued. It is This is close up here. just focus in better. You can see the only reason I have the tape on it right now is because I didn't finish my joint and I figured I didn't want too much spraying off the side. The top roller we had look at the close up of a loose piece we had or strictly there's a, a shot one second. Can't get them together, but that was that's in essence that's our top roller, and we had used heat shrink tubing over it. The crowning we could probably get away with making a new uh, roller for the top, but it runs and you'll see it in a minute. I just figured it was worth showing you. After seeing yours, it was just bait, something we wanted to do. We had started prior to that. But after seeing uh, the tapes of uh, Bill Richards and uh, yours, we uh, definitely wanted an Andy Graf to play around with. Again, another close-up. Perhaps somebody will want to make their own. The acrylic, it was an acrylic tube we had. We had it on hand. I had picked up a six-foot piece of it, and it was around $24. So I used it for something. Another project, it was actually used for my tube coil. And... Uh, you know, basically the whole top half really did, didn't make much. It was a four inch OD uh, acrylic tube, which is very brittle. We had to do it again, I'd like something a little, okay. I guess, stronger. But as far as the clear tube, I think it helped us aligning our belt a lot better than a, uh, than a uh, non, non see through tube. The belt itself, I had found a pair of uh, coveralls, paper coveralls. These, these were almost the type that like the DEP or EPA would use when uh, I guess they would be cleaning up one of New Jersey's famous sites where uh, I guess people usually throw away their oils. But uh, it's just a normal paper coveralls and they're those same type material you might find uh, they have those paper jackets also. It's, it's almost like there's a, a type of a polymer or something embedded in it. Because uh, if you apply heat to it, it shrinks, crinkles up almost like a plastic type 
but there is paper fibers in it. After we cut the, the belt, it was basically, we initially tried sewing it. The sewing worked. You could sew it, but at, during the sewing process, it just stretched it somewhat. So, oh well, Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue worked fine. The shot of the base, I'll go in a little closer. It was a, I used basically a, a wooden platform. I had rubber feet. We actually bought the rubber feet while we were down in uh, Grand, Junction. Grand Junction. Ten cent specials. And the, the angle irons, just some scrap we had laying around. Doesn't look pretty, but it works. The motor was a uh, dual fan. It was an exhaust blower that a fellow at work had thrown out. It was from his overhead stove. And I just pressed the shaft out to get it that let length. It was actually the shaft was even a bolt size of the motor. And the motor did get warm. We initially tried using a rubber belt, and I'll show you the rubber belt. But the paper seems to be running a little cooler. And the motor probably in the future we could probably get away with a stronger motor. The uh, I have a piece here to show you what it works. We had initially We initially had a, uh, the pulley on the base, a drive pulley, was initially the same as the one that's on the top, on the pickup end, and the motor speed was actually too slow. So we, our buster had given us a block of nylon, a piece of round stock, and I think the diameter was two... Two inches. Two inches on the stock. On the stock and bored it out and sort of trued it on a lathe and crowned it on a lathe also. But actually, really, you could just do it with a hand file or sanding device. Here's a difference between the nylon block and the block we originally had. So we did increase our speed by at least maybe, what, two and a half times. The original the block was three-quarter inch diameter. The new block is a little bit less than two inches. So um, our speed has increased at least threefold. We just held a, we had some keys, the, the, I can't even think of a word for them, but actually just ground a slot with a Dremel and snap fit. And the block is held in place by, I drilled a hole in the shaft, and there's a small internal pin that's, occasionally it slips out, but it hasn't, it hasn't stopped running yet. So you can basically, if you want, just drill a right hole through and use a bolt right through it. And... There is one of the keys we had. Basically, all our shafts were all ended with a that type key. Wiring was pretty, pretty basic. I only used a three and a half amp fuse in it. The sprayer, what we're using right now, was out of a discarded ion room ion generator. Somebody threw out. So usually, if I see anything like that laying on the road, I'll just pick it up and scrap it. The sprayer, again, is real, basically the uh, aluminum screen, just pulled some of the ends out, and it rides along it, and it's just held on an alligator clip right now. The pulse of our motor, it was just a basic motor here, and we played around with different mounting and this is just what we ended up with. There were several ways we could have done it, and this is just one of the ones we ended up doing it. The base, again, it was a, the same same type bowl. And this drill, I cut it out with the uh, jigsaw. The tape around the edge just kind of made it so I wouldn't scrape up my acrylic. And that was the only reason the tape's there. Uh, so you can see the rim, just saw the rim off with the jigsaw for the top terminal. So all three salad bowls, I believe, cost less than $15. I think they're only four something apiece. $3.99. $3.99. Kmart. So it's worthwhile shopping around for, uh, they work. The, uh, the base, temporarily, we're not, they said we just finished it today. We were playing around it all week. My wife's really been pressing. Mm -hmm. she, 
she wants to finish it, she likes it. But the base, you can see the base just doesn't quite hit where original design was. So what I'm going to do is probably use standoffs just to hold it up, elevate it. The motor, the motor originally was mounted a little lower, but this way at least if we, the belt stretched, just since yesterday the belt stretched, and we actually had to, to lower the motor some. So, and we'll drop the top on, and we'll fire it up and show you how it runs. Okay, uh, here's all set. I've like been using a variac. I want to work building a uh, regulator speed controller for the base. This way, when I carry it around, I don't have to lug it around. I uh, really don't need one, but initially, since the belt, we're just breaking it in. We've had a time where the belt rode off a little, so that's why we're using the Variac. So I'll bring it up. You can feel the field. The field's pretty well out to here. So, but hey, hey, you can't see it. It hurts. So, I mean, I'm getting... Right. Uh, right to there. I mean, I'm looking. Right there was about an 11 inch spark. And just in our time, there's a lot of ozone thrown off from it, I guess, from, my, from the discharge itself. But I'll fire it up again. The discharges are pretty. Good. I'll knock the lights out. I'll knock the lights out. Well, I'll bring it up again. Maybe you want to knock the light up behind you? Okay. I think, where they had them taking the hits. 
but that's it. And if you look, my wife, since she has her elevated shoes, and she's pretty well off ground, she holds a good discharge. She holds a lot of potential. <laughs> so when she backs up to something afterwards, watch out. <laughs> well, that's, that's it, I guess. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. And on um, one final note, which we forgot to tell you, this was our original belt. It was a rubber belt. We had cut it out of an inner tube, and it wasn't working. We actually could draw an arc off the rubber itself. It was burning. And uh, so we kind of figured it might have been slightly conductive, which I guess there was a lot of carbon in the, in the belt itself. And so we try it with the ohmmeter, and we'll show you. And so it just kicked up the ohmmeter. And it's a let me get this is kind of close in there. You'll see it's you know it's it's about you know varies, but it's almost so I don't know if you can see it. It's almost it's you figure it's almost uh, hundred and fifty thousand ohms. And it's on like approximate thirty inch belt. So it does conduct very strangely. So rubber belts made out of car tubes, inner tube tires, are not the best product to use. And that's it for now.